class costing. It's Serena. Welcome to my YouTube channel. How many of you have taken art workshops or classes costing ten, twenty, thirty dollars or more? How about a good art lesson for less than a dollar each? Well, I found a book series that will give you just that. It's the Ready to Paint in 30 Minutes or Less series. I saw this at a craft store and I was undecided, I was in a hurry, and I didn't buy it then, but I later bought it. Uh, and I'm glad I did because it's a really nice series. Now, there are several topics in the series. This is one for street scenes, and I got this one because I'd like to get into some plein air series. But today I'll focus on The Trees and Woodlands by Jeff Kersey. Now, what I like about it, it's broken down into half hour tutorials. And they're small works, like 4 by 6, 10 by 15 centimeters. They also include three larger projects, which would be 8.5 by 11. So those are full size projects, or 21.5 by 28 centimeters, if you're using those measurements. The projects demonstrate different techniques, so you kind of build on the prior skills. And this book has 32 projects, which is nice. Um, it's a good amount to get into, to get into a lot of details. Detail. Now, at a U.S. retail of $20, that's 63 cents a lesson. Uh, I mean, wow! I mean, you can't get lessons for that, that price. Uh, it's a great, great steal. It's a great bargain. Now, you can sneak in 30-minute lessons when you have time. I like that. You know, you're not locked into three hours on Saturday morning for 12 weeks. Uh, but the best part about this series is the tracings. Now, if you struggle with drawing and want to enjoy the process of painting, these come with sketches drawn for you on vellum. Um, and it's not cheap uh, tracing paper, it's vellum. So you just transfer them, they're ready to go, and it's even for the full-size projects as well. They even give it to you for the full size project. So, I mean, that's really nice. You just put it on your drawing paper, your, your watercolor paper, and transfer it over with uh, by either rubbing the back of these and uh, putting them on your paper. Or I have a separate sheet of paper that I've rubbed graphite on. And I just put the, draw, put the watercolor paper down, put the graphite paper face down onto my watercolor paper, put the tracing on top of that, and you can trace over that. So it's very easy to use. Um, I like that these are not single use. So that's really nice. Now, if you get good at it, if you like a particular scene, you know, you can reuse them. You can draw uh, using, diff you can paint them diff using different colors or different seasons of the year. So that's really nice too. Now, now, if you're ambitious, you can combine some of these tracings next to each other and create your own panoramic painting. Uh, if you have a sketchbook, a lot of the sketchbooks lay out flat and they're quite wide, so you can do like a panorama of a couple of them put together. But I wouldn't be that ambitious right now. I'm just going to think about one at a time and go through the lessons, see if I pick up anything on them. They all give you a breakdown of uh, watercolor supplies, so he gives you a little bit on that in the book here. Just a general, what he uses, what size, is brush, size brushes and so forth that he uses. And, um, but then he gets right down into the painting. Now each lesson lists specific supplies, what you'll need for each lesson. You don't need a lot of equipment. Um, he uses a limited color palette which gives you a lot of practice in color mixing so that's really nice. The lessons are easy to follow. It's good quality as far as the close-ups. You can see exactly what he's doing. It's organized into logical sections. I mean he's going through some of the trees here for the landscape one. He has several different Here's an example of where you can use the one sketch that he provides for a spring, summer, fall, and winter. So you can see the variations in how you would learn to, to change them 
to make them look like the different seasons. But I like the layout. It's just really nice. It gives you a thing on city trees. I like this section particularly, the tree varieties. He goes over a lesson for each specific tree and he's got the tracings. It shows you what tracing number you use. He sh he's got the tracings so that you can follow along and do a plain tree. Now I think this is similar to our um, sycamore in the US. We have a different type of sycamore uh, or plain tree. They have a London plain tree in England. Uh, in Europe it's a little different. Not that much different because the bark has that nice texture to it and he gives you the tips on how to do that. So if you're lost on how to do some of these trees and landscapes, he gives you some guidelines on that. And I like that. Look at the silver birch. It's very nice. These are just very well laid out and nice little chapters. Not not overwhelming, but really nice. Look how to paint low winter sun, early morning mist. Some of these things that you want to do when you get a little more advanced in watercolor. Although a beginner can use this book. It's not that that advanced. It would help to have a class or two maybe under your belt uh, or have practiced for a bit. But other than that, I, I really like it. It gives you pond reflections, adding figures, um, and then the larger paintings. He goes into the larger paintings with you um, that he gives you the tracings for as well. So that's very nice. And um, there's an index too, that's nice. Here's the listing. This is under Search Press. So it's www.searchpress.com. I got it from Amazon. Uh, but there are other books in the series and other books that they carry that are for artists. So I'll be looking into that and that sounds really good. But now let's put it to the test. Um, so I do have my own painting style, but I'd like to see how I do using the artist techniques. So I've skipped the tracing and drew the subject freehand. And this is going to be the autumn tree that I've chosen. Okay. Now I've done it freehand right here. I'm ready to go. And I've got that sketch there. I don't know if you can see it. I have to move it up a little. But I did that freehand. And the sketch in the book for this is number two. It's the number two one. I'll kind of bend that so you can see it. It's just that. It's just that one there. And I've just drawn it freehand. So the first step is to uh, mask the tra and trunk and branches and mix some washes. So while I'm doing that, please leave me a comment on what you think of this video and what you'd like to see more of. I do appreciate all your comments and I'll see you in a little while. Alright, I'm back. Now the first step is to wet the entire top area. I hope I did alright with the frisket there because I had a little bit of a problem on the trunk. It looks like it's still a little... it's got to be wet to do this. And I'm supposed to... hopefully I can do that. I can see bits and pieces here. You're, I'm supposed to drop in the paint right away. So I'm supposed to drop in the yellow. The yellow. Okay, get that yellow going. It should be a little soft. It shouldn't be like a very hard edge of the color. There we go. Okay. And then I have to drop in some of the orange color. Just let that flow into the into the yellow a little bit. Oops, that's a little much. If it's too much, you can pull it out. You can see how the um, you can see how the frisket is resisting, and that's what you want. Okay, you can see how that's blending in quite nicely. Okay, so I'm supposed to do that, and I'm looking to his instructions next to see what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to put the other colors in too, which I have a um, cobalt blue, a little cobalt blue by the trunk he wants. I like to give it a little bit of a dull, so it's not completely bright, bright blue. I mean, bright, bright, bright orange. 
gives a little bit of a variation there. So I'm supposed to put in the greens here. These greens for this, green for this. Let's see if I can clean this up a little bit. I think I wasn't supposed to paint over that. I wasn't looking at the instructions very carefully. I think I wasn't supposed to paint over that completely. It's not supposed to bleed into the bottom. But we can kind of resolve that a little bit if we do this. See, you know, it's not an exact science, and of course I'm not following his instruction completely, but um, this gives you a little bit of an idea of how you can work out a mistake and how you learn from the mistakes. You know, we all make mistakes. This is not an exact science. Everybody's got their own style. So I've got the grass there a little bit, and that's bleeding into that, which it should. Uh, he wanted some highlights in the bushes with a bright yellow, or a lemon yellow. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this with a a pure yellow, but we'll see how that looks. If it's still wet, it won't be too ridiculous. So it looks like I missed that one spot completely, doesn't it? I'm looking at this over here. I'm going to add just a little bit. Sometimes you got to watch doing this, though, and it's too dry. You don't want to... You don't want to overdo it. Because then you'll just ruin it. Sometimes you overwork something that's not that's not what you want to do. See, this is starting to bleed in there. I don't want I don't want the bleeding, so I'm going to pull that up a little so it doesn't look like it's bleeding into that. It actually looks like a river <laughs> because it's got a little bit of a reflection. But he does say to put some of the you take the dark green and put some shadows in here or put some grass in here. Oh, doesn't that kind of look terrible with that frisket I've got? Looks really bad. <laughs> that your orange and green together looks awful. All right, we're bleeding it. It's bleeding in too much. I don't want it to do that feathery thing. So I'm just picking up some of these as I go. I mixed way too much paint, but it's better to mix more paint than less because once you have your painting in the works you don't want to have a problem with it later on and have to stop and make more. What I'll do is let this dry and I need to go on to the next section which will be adding more uh, paint around the trees and pulling the frisket off and painting the trunk itself. Now that it's relatively dry, I'm going to use the dry, press, dry brush technique to paint the main branches, or paint over the main branches of the tree with an orange mix. All right, so let's see how we can do that. It's got to be quite dry, or it won't uh, it won't work well. And I do have a uh, hot press paper, so it's actually not it's not the best for this technique. If you use a dry brush on a textured paper, it's going to show, see it's not going to work very well with this very, very dry. That's a, that's a little wet. See if it's a little wet, make a mistake, pick it right up. You won't even see that later on. So you've got to get it pretty dry, pat it on a paper towel. See how I should have tested it first before I put that section there on the paper, but I'll have to make all the other sections a little dark to match. This kind of gives you uh, the illusion of leaves, and that's really all you're looking to do. Is You're not drawing every single leaf in. It would take you all day, and it wouldn't look natural anyway. So just kind of get some paint on there and and go over it. So the more layers you're putting on this type of painting, the more realistic it starts looking. And the nice backgrounds there, even though my purples came out quite muddy when I mixed it in with the oranges, which I would do because purple and orange make 
mud. <laughs> Blue and orange make mud. Um, it still will be nice when you look at the overall uh, painting. And what I like about this is, you see, even though I am following his uh, direction for the most part, it's still coming out like an individual uh, style of my own. It doesn't quite look like a copy. And you don't want it to look like a copy either. That would be awful. That's a little too wet, but I do want to match some of that up that, that I've got up there where I did it too darkly. And that's okay. Go right up to the edge of the tree there with this because I've got that masking fluid on it. And that makes it look a little more realistic too because you've got foliage, in, it looks like in the background. So you see a little bit of, of a hint of foliage there. It's the impression of a tree. It, again, it's not a perfect tree. It's not a photograph. Paintings shouldn't look like photographs. It just, it's art. It, it shouldn't look like an exact copy. Alright, so we have that there. Now the next thing is to let that dry a little bit and we're going to pull off the frisket. Alright, now I have removed all the frisket and you can see the nice light color there uh, that we have to work with now. I need to wet the area where the frisket was. I hope I got that all. I really do. I guess I can tip it a little. I'm not getting much of a glare on there. I'll make sure this is all this is very wet because that's the key to the blending. Main, mainly the trunk here. That's what I want to get wet. Let's make sure that's plenty wet. Okay. And these side, just the start of the side branches because it will look a little weird if it doesn't blend properly. Alright, so we're going to first start with a smaller brush and putting in some of the, well, actually I'm going to use the same brush, putting in some of the bright green uh, diluted. That's what it, the instruction shows. Dilute that down. And then I'm kind of reading at the side while I'm doing this. Alright, so while wet, add touches of purple mix and orange mix here and there. Alright, so purple mix is here. I'm going to go light with that because I don't... I'm not sold on that purple. It's kind of drying up a little bit already. We shouldn't... Alright, what other color we want to use is the orange. And I'm running out of that orange color. I don't have a whole lot left. That's not good. But let's get it going in there. Blending it quite nicely there. Getting more of that color. See, that's dry. That's already dry down there. I don't know why that's so dry. Let me get that wet. I mean, I don't think I just... I don't think I wet it at all. I think I must have missed that part. But I'll leave it like that. See, that does look quite nice. I'll drop a little more purple. I see how he has the purple in there. The purple looked better before I put the other colors in. Okay. And this is a dark, dark color, so I've got to be careful with this one. I don't want this too, too dark, but we do want to give it a little bit of a shade to it. We can make that crotch a little bit dark there. Have a little shadow on it. And the more I work on this, the more it looks like a shadow. You can see as you're adding more of the color to it, it gives it more depth. You're getting more depth in there. You want to do it carefully because you don't want you don't want that straight look to it because it will look like, you know, a I don't know, it won't look like a tree. Now it's see it's it's drying enough that I can add a little more It'll still blend a little bit, but it won't be so harsh. Now these other branches are going to be quite dark. And I have to be careful drawing them because I don't, I'm not using a very fine brush. I think I'm going to switch to another 
brush because I'm just not it's it's looking too clumsy at the end and see this is what's good about painting the more you paint the more you learn the more experience you get and the better you get at it well I certainly am liking this first exercise here just a shadow of the tree trunk here let's get that in there a little bit oh, 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 oh. my brush touched it and I didn't want to I would almost want to put some shade in there it, I'm wanting to do that and I it's not in the instructions so this is like completely off the I might botch it up too if I do this uh, I'm working the paper sideways so I can kind of give it a little bit of a not a really a texture but work around the flatness of the page I again I'm using that hot pressed paper when I should have a cold press there and this edge here bothers me it's a little bit too harsh Let's see if I can soften that up a little that's the one thing you can do with watercolor you can either add more water or you can kind of blend it in so make blending it a little bit so it doesn't have such a sharp edge and then I'm adding other color to it I work too much on these things and what happens you know what happens it's, it looks bad right, this bothers me here too I didn't do such a great job on it so let me see if I can ruin it some more <laughs> put some of this in don't we all do this we we have a painting that like kind of looks okay and then we just have to mess with it you know we just can't leave it alone all right I am all right we're promised we're gonna leave it alone now that's it done 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 okay are we done I can soften that a little bit oh, I just can't leave it alone all right so that's what I'm going to do well there's the finished painting I definitely recommend these books uh, there are enough choices in the series to appeal to most people they do have a seaside boat type themed one uh, they have one for flowers they have a few others as well which is nice now I'd like to see one on portraits or painting people I know many artists struggle with this I know I do that would be great uh, spiral bound uh, binding would be nice to be able to lay flat on the table while you're painting it's um, I it's a little hard if the book is new it kind of wants to flip closed uh, the having a total list of supplies for the entire book would be helpful I know each of the the projects tells you what you need as far as the types of colors or the brushes uh, he does give you at the beginning a little bit on that as far as uh, the supplies that he has but for for um, a total list of the paints it would be nice to have that uh, that would be very helpful now the index is concluded I do like that that's helpful um, overall very interesting subjects fun to paint it's challenging enough uh, maybe a bit beyond a beginner uh, challenging for beginner but not so much that it would be frustrating for beginners my feeling is if you learn something you improve your skill it was well worth it and I think these books are well worth it I'm sure I'll learn something I'm not so great that I can't learn something from everybody now I hope you enjoyed our time together don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe see you next time